whole new debate arising, and that is to do with a growing distrust in economic systems as they are at the present. Um, we've seen the rise of populism, and that's been expressed at the ballot box, of course, uh, here in the UK, over in the US, and most recently in Italy as well. What hasn't changed over this time is that we're told that people don't care about economics. Ordinary people don't care about economics, they don't understand it, it doesn't matter to them. And even if they did get it, there's nothing they could do about it. We're all apparently subject to invisible forces. And I disagree with that wholeheartedly. So hence why I came about to reading, let's see this, oh, there we go, The Almighty Dollar. Uh, the, follow the incredible journey of a single dollar to see how a global economy really works. Uh, I'm going to try and take you on a bit of a whistle-stop tour uh, around some of those countries there. There's not much we can do in half an hour that's, you know, half the length of the average episode of McMafia, but let's see how we get on. Uh, let's start off by talking about whether or not it is true that the economy is simply too complex for us to understand. This is, uh, well, you recognise those top two pictures there, Davos, World Economic Forum, taken at the start of the year. Why is that important? I think those kind of pictures encapsulate how people feel about economics today. The fact that the dismal science has now become the distant science. And I mean that in the sense that, you know, I was um, at Davos earlier this year at the World Economic Forum, and we're told it's the great and the good. It's Davos, man, and yes, they are mainly men out there still. Um, it's business leaders, it's political leaders, and they are sitting there eating their, you know, $50 croque messieurs, and they're getting ready to check into their $1,000 per night hotel rooms, so this is no exaggeration. And they're wringing their hands and talking about what can be done about poverty and inequality to a soundtrack of champagne corks popping. And that is, uh, you know, that's the highest town in Europe, Davos. So it can feel very remote, and it feels very cut off from the lives of ordinary people. It's not just um, Davos, of course. Uh, there we've got you know, financial markets, and again, you know, they're the casinos where the money men and women are taking bets, million, trillion, billion dollar bets, on issues that affect all of us. But quite often we get to feel that that's something that is remote, even though what they're doing there has a real impact on profits, on incomes, GDP, jobs, the rest of it. So what does this all mean? When it comes to things like, you know, the referendum and it comes to things like the US election, what we tend to hear about is the politics, of course. It's about the personalities, not the policies. It's about the spin, it's about the speculation, it's not the facts. So how do we cut through all of that? And I think, you know, it's quite a simple way of looking at this. I think it comes down, frankly, to the dollar. So why the dollar? Well, it all boils down to the fact that, uh, you know, you can call it what you will, those notes. Um, well, many names, actually. The dollar's called the dead presidents. It's called Buck, a greenback. But ultimately, the dollar is what underpins our entire financial system. It underpins our entire global economy. We talk about globalization. Globalization is, okay, so what keeps the wheels spinning? What keeps the wheels really spinning is the dollar. It's that common currency of globalization. Why is that? Well, it's the international currency of trade. It's the bedrock of the central banks, we were saying. It's that reserve currency. And it's remained as such, despite the rise of the euro, despite the rise of China's currency, and of course, we've now got additional currencies coming up. Uh, what does that all mean? It's also seen as one of the safest ways of holding money. 40% of the world's debts, um, be they private or public, denominated in dollars. And when it comes to instability, when it comes to financial crises, when it comes to economic crisis, whether or not they're affecting America or not, what we tend to find is the dollar pops up time and time again. It's not pesos they've got under the bed in Argentina when things go a little bit crazy. It's dollars. It's seen as the safest store of value.